Did this, did the show actually grow out of just your personal belief system, or is it, um, was there anyone else um, asking you to do this, or did it kind of go, was it, were you following a path yourself or one that someone was trying to push you down? Oh yeah, everybody at television was going, would somebody please do a skeptic show? That's where the, that's where the money is! <laughs> Just say that, that's all I'm doing. Uh, no, uh, we, we have, because of, and I, uh, uh, because of Amazing Randy, who is the, uh, uh, and so, Rather directly, if there were not uh, Amazing Randy, there would not be Penn and Teller. He created us. And uh, uh, Randy, um, from the moment anybody would listen to us about doing a TV show, we would pitch doing a skeptical show. And at that time, when we were on Broadway and stuff, and, you know, we were hanging out with you all the time, a lot of people wanted to listen to us about having a show. And we would go in and we would pitch you know, we're going to do a skeptical show and just say there's no ESP and there's no families and there's no anything. And, and you know, no talking to the dead and this kind of stuff. And they would say, yeah, great, we're going to do that show. And you'll do a few shows like that. And then one of the shows, you'll show something real that you can't explain. But there are angels, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we'd say, well, there's a lot of stuff we can't explain, but that doesn't mean it's supernatural. And they go, well, you know, you do this, and the example, um, the Jonathan Ross, who's a wonderful, uh, a kind of, yeah, few people know, but a real comic guy, and also kind of uh, analogous to David Letterman in, um, in London, in England. And um, Jonathan Ross said he was talking about doing a skeptical show with his wife, uh, Jane, who wrote uh, Kick-Ass, about a lot of other stuff. And uh, he said, they said, you know, we want to do a bunch of skeptical shows, and then it's like find a place where at night the toys really do come alive. <laughs> that sums up every one of our pitch meetings. You know, we'll do a few of these that are skeptical, and then we'll find a place where at night the toys really come alive. And finally, Showtime um, decided to, uh, to take a chance on what they considered to be counter-programming, and to do a show that was skeptical. And I think what is uh, kind of, um, my strongest memory about it is we pitched bullshit um, two weeks after 9-11. And there was the feeling that uh, the, the, uh, the country was supposed to try to get back to normal after, after the horrible uh, tragedy. So we had these pitches set to go all around LA and do about you know eight or nine pitches for, for a skeptical show. And I remember, and I don't remember if it was the Showtime pitch, it would be a better story if it was, but all the pitches kind of run together. I remember saying to them that we were going to make a prediction. And it was not a prediction based on the supernatural, but a prediction just based on what we knew about people. And that we would predict that John Edwards, within four months, would announce a show where he was going to speak to the dead of 9-11. And we said when he announces that, uh, all of you will feel terrible and miserable because you helped push John Edwards on the American public. And, uh, John Edwards, John Edwards on the American public. And Keller and I will feel okay because at least we tried to give a skeptical point of view. And we thought when we gave him that speech that we were exaggerating in order to clarify. And sure enough, a few months later, you may not remember this, but a few months later, John Edward, the top, you know, top of the dead guy, actually announced that he was going to do a TV special where that fucking motherfucker was going to pretend to talk to the dead people who were killed in 9-11. And uh, he then pulled it back because apparently the spirits told him that that was a dubious taste. <laughs> Announced. So at a time when the media was reporting very, very much that uh, that America was supposed to be getting more spiritual, there were some people, and uh, some people at Showtime, who decided that maybe it was a time for even more skepticism and even more um, of that, and they took a chance with bullshit, and that was, uh, that was uh, over eight years ago, and we're now the longest running show uh, in Showtime history. So. things that you've kind of taught me about skepticism and atheism, which I always found like really 
strong is the fact that many people think that atheists and skeptics are closed-minded, but the truth is that they're more open-minded. Extraordinary claims require extraordinary proof. Uh, one of the things that always told me that I was hiding to that was when I, I think it was Einstein with the theory of relativity? Yeah. He, um, when he first proposed that, postulated that, a bunch of scientists said, oh, this is wrong, so this doesn't work. And he kind of showed his work, like we always supposed to do in, in our SATs, and they all said, oh, oh, we're wrong. He's right. And being able to admit you're wrong with more information is, is one of the greatest things in the world, I personally think. And now you're eight years in. Are there any shows that you kind of look back on and go, Ooh, you know, maybe we should have, you know, not taken that stance, or maybe we have new information now. We're right more than Einstein. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> the story that goes with that about Einstein is uh, he was once, they once said to him, they're putting out a book called A Hundred Scientists Prove Einstein Wrong. And Einstein's response was, one. It takes one. 